Hi, I'm Ben Cooper and I'm the Pre-Law Program Manager here at Baylor. Welcome to Spring Premiere. Uh, we're sorry that we can't be there with you in person, uh, but we're glad that you've taken the time to sit down and find out a little bit more about what makes Baylor and the Pre-Law Program a great place for you to spend the next four years. Uh, you can probably hear from my accent that I'm not from Texas. Uh, I'm from Australia. Uh, I went to, I grew up in Australia, went to law school in Australia at the University of Queensland. Uh, was admitted to the Queensland Supreme Court and the High Court of Australia, which is the equivalent of the Supreme Court here in the United States. Uh, and after practicing there for a number of years, relocated to London. Uh, I took my exams and worked, I was requalified re and admitted to the Supreme Court of England and Wales. And I worked in a large um, banking and financial services firm doing litigation in London's financial district known as the Square Mile. And then ultimately ended up here at Baylor. I've been in Waco for seven years um, and it's been a wonderful place. I've enjoyed my time so much both in Waco uh, and at Baylor. It's a very uh, unique institution in the sense that it's about so much more than getting your degree. The idea of transformational education is something that's practiced rather than just talked about. And the wonderful thing about my job is the opportunity to really get to know students in a very unique and personal way to help understand what their goals are and what some of the challenges to those goals are and to sit down with them over the course of four years and to come up with a plan and a solution to get them to where they ultimately want to go as quickly as possible. I love my job, I love working with college students and I certainly hope that through the course of this presentation you get a sense of what makes Baylor a unique place and a great place for you to explore and prepare for uh, the legal profession. So I think before we jump into what makes Baylor unique and the pre-law program itself it's really important that we get a couple of terms down. You're going to hear about things called tracks. Now there is a pre-law track in philosophy in political science and in economics. But a track is really just a set list of courses that you need to take in order to graduate with that track. Now that track itself will not give you any advantage when it comes to actually getting into law school. None at all. Um, you are going to have far more help from your grades than you will by having the track. The pre-law program, the program that I oversee, is actually made up of two what we call designations pre-law and pre-law interest. Now, to be pre-law, you have to have a GPA, a cumulative GPA, of at least a 3.2 at the end of your first 24 credit hours. So basically at the end of your first year. If you don't have that minimum 3.2, you will drop down to what we call pre-law interest. Uh, now, practically speaking, there's no difference between the two. Both designations get the same emails, the same access to advising, to events, to podcasts, all of that stuff. It's exactly the same. But the reason we have that distinction is because once you get to below a 3.2, your GPA is simply not competitive when it comes to law school. And that doesn't mean you won't get in, but it is much lower than what your average is going to be when you start to look at that top 50 odd schools in the country. So the reason we have that designation is not to make life hard for you. But if you do lose that designation or you get close to that 3.2 threshold, it's an opportunity for us to sit down and say, is this still what you want to do? Do you still hope to go to law school? And if the answer is no, then let's figure out a way to get you where you ultimately want to go as quickly and efficiently as we can. If the answer is yes, you still want to go to law school, fantastic. Let's start talking about ways that we can turn the boat around, that we can connect you with the resources that you need to get those grades trending upwards. Uh, let's talk about some of the study resources and the study skills that you can be working on so that we can get you back on track and heading ultimately towards law school. So pre-law track, pre-law designation, and that's what we're going to focus on, the designation. Uh, I talked before about the importance of Baylor's idea of transformational education. Okay, We are not a factory. We are not trying to mass produce as many lawyers as we can. Instead, we want to give you access to the resources and the information and the opportunities to be able to answer two primary questions. What is it like to be a lawyer and do you want to be one? Now, lawyers 
and doctors tend to be favourites for movies and television. And, you know, you can think of shows like Suits, Goliath, which is on Amazon. Um, I grew up with a film called A Few Good Men, and it really inspired me to want to go to law school. But the problem with that is that the way the practice of law is often presented in movies and on television is not in any way reflective of what the actual life of a lawyer is like. And so our whole goal here is to get you exposed to the reality so that you can go in with your eyes open. No, uh, knowing before you go is really important, and that's what we're focused on. So how do we do that? Well, we give you a lot of opportunities to get exposed to the profession. So we bring lawyers to campus, for example. Uh, we offer a regular podcast where we interview lawyers across the country in a variety of different practice areas so that you begin to get exposed to what those practice areas look like. We offer a law fair every year where we have somewhere between 70 and 100 law schools come to campus to meet with our students. And it's a great opportunity for you to connect with law schools to get a sense of what they're looking for and what it's like itself. Uh, there are opportunities for you to go and study abroad um, and to do an internship while abroad. So at Baylor, you can, uh, for course credit, go and spend the summer in Toronto or London or Hong Kong or Sydney in a law firm and, and get credit for that. Uh, we also have a really strong program called the Baylor in Washington program. And that's an opportunity for you to spend an entire fall or spring, so it's not a summer program, in Washington, D.C., working, Monday to Friday, like a regular employee. And then you take classes on a Wednesday evening. That's a massive advantage for you as a, as a pre-law student because you get real-world work experience, a genuine resume entry, and you'll return to campus not only with an expanded network of important contacts, but also a full semester's worth of credit. We've had students spend that semester at the Supreme Court various think tanks, uh, the Department of Justice, the State Department, the US Attorney's Office. Um, there is a very long list of very prestigious places that our students have gone and that is a great opportunity for you to explore. We offer two $3,000 scholarships for pre-law designated students to take part in that program. Uh, it's also uh, worth considering some of the academic programs that we have at Baylor. So the Baylor Business Fellows, uh, the Baylor Interdisciplinary Corps, the Honors College, the University Scholars Program. They're great ways for you to get exposed to the kind of learning that's going to be um, developing the skills that will be important in law school. Let's talk about majors. Law schools are not going to be focused on your major. Don't choose political science because you think you have to. You should choose your major based solely on two things. What are you interested in and what are you good at? If you're interested in a course or a, or a subject area, you're just likely to do much better in those classes because you're genuinely interested. But we also want to develop um, your skill set, and so we want you to have a natural inclination to that. So I had, for example, a student who was fascinated by Latin but was not very good at languages. So they had the interest but they didn't have the aptitude. You need to choose a major that answers yes to both of those. Are you interested? Do you have the aptitude? Law schools are going to be far more focused on two things when it comes to academics. They're going to be focused on what was your GPA, and they're going to be focused on the skill set that that uh, academic uh, education developed. Things like reading, writing, critical thinking, research, editing, uh, verbal communication skills, demonstrated background interest in the law, um, a dedication to public service. That's what they're going to be looking for, grades and that skill set. You can develop the skill set in any number of majors, and I always have students from the fine arts, so music, dance and theatre, who decide that they want to go to law school. Now, those students um, have the grades, but they may not necessarily have developed that skill set, and so what they need to do is they need to plan ahead so that they're pursuing courses in their electives that develop that skill set, but they could also consider what we call the legal reasoning and analysis minor, which is a minor that's optional, that has been developed to cover off on six of the 10 skills that the American Bar Association has identified. It's also really important that you get to know your professors, and that's a real strong point for Baylor, just because we can offer great student to professor ratios, uh, 
and people want to get to know their students. One of the things I love about my job is the fact that I get to know students on a personal basis, to interact with them on a daily basis, and to get a sense of what it is they want to do and why they want to do it, and then to come up with a plan to help them get there. Now, you're going to need letters of prof uh, recommendation from your professors when it comes to law school, but you'll also need them when it comes to entering the workforce. And so it's, it's really important that you get to know your professors. You or someone else is paying a significant amount of money for you to get a college education. And I think you have an obligation to use that opportunity to get to know at least two or three of your professors in a meaningful way. Not just because it will be helpful to you when you decide to enter the workforce or law school, but because it's a unique time in your life where you get to be around experts in a field for four years and to take real advantage of that. The law school admissions test is by far the most important part of your law school application. It's not the only part, they will look at you holistically. They will read every part of your application, but your law school admissions test score is key. At most schools, it's the only thing they look at when it comes to scholarships. How do we help you get ready for that? Well, as I said before, there is no required major for law school, but we do offer some courses that we strongly recommend our students pursue. And they're basically logic courses to help you develop that foundation that we know you need to do well on the LSAT. We want our students to try and do those two logic courses before the end of sophomore year. The reason being, if you do well, then you know you have this foundation on which you can build. If, however, those courses don't go as well as you had hoped, you have time to do some of that remedial work on your own time so that when you do begin to prepare for the law school admissions test, you've got that foundation that you need. You're going to need personal statements. Uh, and again, this is where the Baylor Pre-Law Program becomes um, very helpful to you. All I do is law school admissions. That's my focus in a way uh, that you may not get at some other larger schools. And so when you come to apply to law school, whether that's as a rising senior or as an alumni, you will get one-on-one -on -one help from me with every aspect of your application. Who to ask for letters of recommendation, how to write a personal statement, putting together your resume, where should you be spending the summer, figuring out where to apply, negotiating scholarships, figuring out where to go. That's all something that we offer to you on a one-on-one, -on -one, very, very tailored basis. And it's a really um, unique part of the Baylor Pre-Law Program that is, I think, uh, probably more focused than you will find at some other schools. Now, I mentioned resumes. You're going to need a resume for law school, but you're also going to need it if you desire, decide to enter the workforce. Because remember, the average first-year law student is roughly 26 or 27. So a lot of people will not go straight to law school. They'll get some work experience first. So you've got to start building that resume because whether you decide to go straight to law school or into the workforce, you're going to need a resume that says you're a capable individual. That means you've got to use your summers well. You should have no summers where you're not doing anything. Um, you should be taking classes. You should be volunteering. You should be working. Just be doing something. But let's talk about some of the ways that you can develop that resume. So we mentioned the Baylor and Washington program. Fantastic opportunity for you to do that. But we also have a lot of lawyers in the Central Texas area because we have our own law school, which we'll talk about in some detail shortly. Uh, those lawyers are very keen to give opportunities to undergraduates. The reality is getting experience as an undergraduate is often very difficult because you're competing with law students who have more experience and more knowledge. But because of our proximity to the Baylor Law School, we have a lot of lawyers who are willing to give those opportunities to undergraduates. We also have a great relationship with the US Attorney's Office. Uh, a couple of years ago, they started a program where they opened up their summers to undergraduates. And the first year that program existed, Baylor took up over half of the spots. And as that pool of universities that were invited to take part has grown, um, Baylor has still had a consistently significant uh, number in that cohort each summer. And several of our students have then gone on and secured graduate positions with the US Attorney's Office before they've ultimately gone on to law school. Now I mentioned the importance of having a law school on campus. I will help you go to any law school in the country and we regularly have students admitted to schools in the top 15. For example, this, sem this season alone we've had students accepted to the University of Chicago, uh, to Columbia, 
uh, NYU, University of Virginia, University of Michigan, um, Berkeley, all over the country, including obviously the Texas schools. You know, there's a just there's no list of, of, of places you can go, but huge advantage to you as an undergraduate as part of the Baylor program is that you have access to the law school itself on campus. That means that you get invited to guest speaking events at the law school. It means you can interact with faculty and law students. It means if you're part of one of the advocacy programs like uh, Moot Court or Mock Trial, you'll have access to their state-of-the-art courtrooms. It's also a huge advantage because we can very easily get you into a law school class. So you'll get a feel for what being in law school is actually like. And that's a huge advantage because ultimately we want you to know before you go. Uh, we have a podcast called Bears, the Bar and Beyond. And we talk to lawyers all over. Um, and that's a great opportunity for you to further explore the profession itself. Um, when it comes to the law school admissions test, I mentioned its importance earlier. As well as those logic courses, we bring um, law school admissions test prep companies to campus um, to do regular webinars and workshops on campus to help you explore that test, to help you prepare for it, and to take it seriously. Um, you can go for law, to law school for free, but the key to that is having a very competitive law school admissions test result. I mentioned that some people like to go and get some work experience first. Um, in part, that's because perhaps they want to focus on their academics while they're in college and they'll worry about the LSAT later on. Um, others aren't entirely sure if they want to go to law school, so they want to get some work experience first. What I want you to know is, once you're a bear, you're always a bear. And what I mean by that is, you will get the same level of assistance from my office as an alum as you would have had had you decided to apply straight away. Coming back to that idea that we are not a factory. We want you to explore what's out there. We want you to find the best fit for you. And if you find that best fit two years after you've graduated, you will still have the opportunity to have help from our office to go and get you where you want to go. Um, Baylor has it's changed my life. It's been a fantastic place to live and work. And uh, I just think it's a great place for you to come figure out uh, what is next for you to prepare for what's next in the best possible way, getting to know your professors, being surrounded by like-minded, uh, like driven students who also want to go to the next level. Um, you can go anywhere from Baylor. We have people go all over the country to great schools, to great programs. Um, and I just want to invite you to check out our website, uh, www.baylor.edu slash prelaw uh, but also feel free to contact me directly I am more than happy to have one-on-one uh, -on -one video conversations with you or telephone whatever you prefer um, I can answer any other questions that you might have you can email me directly at prelaw at baylor.edu that's prelaw no hyphen no period at Baylor.edu, uh, and you can also contact me directly at 254 262 6383. That's 254 262 6383. Thank you for taking the time to join us. We're so glad that you could be here with us, uh, and I hope to hear from you uh, soon. Enjoy the rest of your visit with Baylor, and as, as we say here, sick and bears. <laughs>